Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial which is looking at making a very simple mock-up file. Um, this came about from the Facebook group Affinity Photo and Margaret Holdsworth said she'd like to learn how to make a template so she could place photos within a sort of very basic setup. So I said I would try and make a video to show how this is done and the end result I came up with was something like this because Margaret wanted a sort of a frame around the box that she wanted the photo to go into so I've done one with a sort of a flat f face on image and one where I've altered the perspective of that image as well so this is just a sort of rough idea of how I'm hoping this will end up looking like so let me shut that down now I'm going to start with this background that I've, I've made using Olivia's delight styles um, I did this as a test just to see how it worked but I quite like it so I'm going to use this as my background and I've also made this basic A5 image here and I've just put your image here and this is what we're going to use for the place where you can put your images now the thing is you need to save this as a document not just as an image I mean and by that what I mean by document is if you had made this up using lots of different layers and filters and adjustments that whole thing would be a document and you would save that via the file save as rather than export because you export it as a JPEG but you save it as an AF photo file and the AF photo file saves all the data layers filters and what have you so it is a document within its own right so you just click on save as and as you can see I have already saved this as a document because it is a dot AF photo file so I won't save it again and I'll just close that down because that is the JPEG version now just recently within the last week or so Affinity Photo and all the Affinity programs were updated to the 1.8 versions which means that you can now use Photoshop's PSD files and their embedded um, smart objects. Now this is basically the same idea but done in Affinity Photo. We are going to embed these files and sort of make them smart objects. So first thing we need to do is to open up that document that I made previously. Now you don't just open it up and copy and paste it in. You do have to use the place command which is in the file menu. You come down to place. You find the file um, where it is saved. And I can't 100% remember where I put it now. Um, there we go, embedded images. So there's my AF photo file. So click that and open and as you can see the cursor turns to this arrow and just below it there's a little downward arrow and a circle so I'm just going to draw out that roughly where I want it and I'm going to want another one down here now I have found it's not a good idea to duplicate this and just drag down another version of it because when you place an image in one it seems to end up in both so I'm going to place another version of that file and I'm going to put it down here right, so now I have the two versions of this um, 
now just for my own personal taste because this one is at the bottom I'm going to just drag that layer down so I know the bottom one is at the bottom layer here so the other thing that Margaret wanted was a border now there's various ways to make a border but I'm just going to go for a very quick version of making a border and let's come to the FX icon that is down here click on that click on outline and then just raise the radius of that to get a border that's roughly about 30 pixels and then click on the other one and do the same thing there and I'm going to change the color of this let's go with should we go with let's try a green and then raise that to about 30 pixels just so it's visible there we go it's close enough so there we have our two basic frames with our basic um, outlines so now the one next thing I want to do is I want to alter the perspective of one of these so one will be face on and the other one will be slightly slanted now I'm going to do this to in fact I'll do it to the top one this time because this is the one that is highlighted and what I am going to do is I'm going to come up to the view menu and click on show grid or you can do control plus whatever that symbol is called I can't remember what that is called sorry but it's just as easy to click on show grid so it gives me an idea of where I'm going to be moving these two and then I'm going to come to the live filter which is this sort of hourglass icon here click on that and come to perspective and it will open the perspective options down here but all I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag these nodes here and place them using the grid as a guideline so if I put that one there and get this on the same line that way let's make it a bit smaller about like that right so I've got a nice straight line there using the grid as the guideline so I can now turn that grid off and I can close that down so basically we now have that sort of set up and that is your template so I'm going to save this now so I'm going to come to file and save as and give this a name so I'm just going to put this as test mock-up and as you can see down here this it we can save in two types it's like AF photo and AF template now basically they are exactly the same file sort of but they're just different names um, so obviously affinity photo can open up both but if you save it as af photo which is what we're going to do here because we're using the save as command it will save it as a document i'm just saving this basically like this way for backing up purposes so save as so that is now saved and then i'm going to come down to the file menu and this time come down to export as template and I have already previously made a folder for myself to put templates into and as you can see this is now calling itself test mockup dot af template so I can save that now as a template so I'll come back to that in a minute so now it's a case of putting in the photos that I want into these two images so let's start with the 
top one. So I'm clicking on the top layer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the icon for that image. So double click that and what happens it opens up the document that is inside you know this other document my your image here document and all I need to do now is to replace that picture but again using the place command so file place navigate to my folder where I have my image so I'm going to pick this picture here and again the cursor has changed its shape and then it's just a case of clicking and dragging out this image and then placing it where I want and as you can see you've got two tabs here one is the embedded folder I'm working on now but if I click back on the other one that image has already been placed inside that particular box and hopefully the perspective is now correct because we had the perspective filter already attached so if you wanted to edit this a bit more you can do and it will the effects will end up being shown in the main document but I'm happy with that as it is so I will close that down so we that is that one done so I'll now click and highlight this layer double click the icon file and place pick this second image and drag this out get it where I want it now this time I do want to make an alteration but I will just show you first that is now in that document come back to the embedded document and I'm just going to add a levels adjustment to this just to darken this up a bit close that down and when I come back to there we now have the darker image on there in fact if I turn this off no, this one off come back to that you can see that is now lighter so I'll put that back on again I can shut that embedded document down and that is the image finished and I can save this as a JPEG and if that's you know all that you need to want to do so what I'm now going to do is open up a new document so file and new and the new version of Affinity Photo 1.8 has this new style um, but it does allow you to use templates which is this second option here so if I click on the templates that one I saved earlier is there I can just click on that create and I have my ready-made template ready to use again and again however I want because I saved it previously so basically that is it that is the end of this tutorial hopefully it's answered all of Margaret's questions so thank you for watching and goodbye